it destroyed. Thank you, Lord. Because we're always bearing the things of Christ so that his glory can be manifested in us. I face things so that Christ can be glorified through me for others around me that creation may know who our God is. Not only that, but I may know the God of glory being manifested by his spirit. And if that doesn't get you excited, if that doesn't give you motivation, if that doesn't bring you out. Because we all face many things day by day, but this is our strength and our resource and our enlightenment because of what he has done and what he is doing through us. Molding and shaping us. Pushing us out of our comfort zone. Changing our minds and our imaginary perception. So that we can know him. Know the truth. Because what is eternal is real. But this flesh holds. It's temporal. So my investment is with Christ. Let us just dwell on that this morning and give God a praise. Give God a glory. And we move into the next portion of our service. This God becomes to bless us. In Jesus' name. Don't stop your praise. Don't stop clapping. Continue to lift up your voice and to the Lord. And He is good. And He is very good. To be praised. Seek his face. He is ever present in our 
our time of need. He is a loving and a kind God, and he has made every provision for you to be in right relationship with him. Amen? Amen. All right. So we're going to just shake it off. Whatever you brought into the building, we're going to shake it off. Whatever is on your mind, we're going to place it at the altar, at the feet of the Lord, because he can handle all things. Amen? Amen. We're going to start a little bit with the hymn. Amen? Amen. When I was a kid, we used to sing hymns all the time. And sadly, I don't know all the words, but I do know some of the words. So we have a hymn book to help us out with this morning. But also, the chorus is fairly simple, so y'all will be able to uh, join in. But we love hymns for the simple fact that a lot of the times they're just the word of God being sung into our hearing, into our spirits, into our hearts. And so we just want to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm done talking. But we can get to pray. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Is somebody like Jehovah? Come on, clap your hands if you believe that right now. It is a blessing to see all of your faces on today. To be among friends and family. And all of you that God has allowed you to be sustained until this very hour. I'm just, I'm excited today. I'm excited. First, let me give an honor to God who's the head of my life. Who, because of him, I live, I move, I breathe. You may be seated while I'm just chatting with you a moment. I give honor to how he's blessed us with such a lovely companion, First Lady Dickens. Thank God for all of the brothers the sisters, all of the young people. I look around and I see that your presence makes the difference. And you may not feel that way, you may not sense that your presence is making a difference, but your presence makes a difference. But certainly, without God, we would not be able to gather here so peacefully. Without God working it out for us, we wouldn't have the opportunity to have our life, our health, and our strength. And I see that daily because I work in the hospital setting. There are a lot of people that wish they were out and about walking, being able to use all of their faculties and some other parts of their bodies and members of their bodies. Uh, they wish they were in good health. But we are. And because of that, we can give God thanks. It is good to have Sister Saluma and her family with us on today again. But I'm going to show you how that works. Because of Sister Saluma being here today, one of my good friends, like a brother, we work hand in hand, side by side. And we just had a, a good time as partners working in the technical field on the help desk. He had a special skill set that helped us in a lot of things that we had to address and face. But one thing I learned about when you are in the presence of someone, you have to learn how to love them, and integrate yourself into their lives, trusting that God is gonna always knit you together and bring them to a place to where they also, the word that's God has placed in their hearts will be brought back to life and that he can minister into their lives. It is good to have Brother Elliot with us today. Somebody just give a round of for him. Good brother. Even when uh, we were working out and I was weak, he helped me to uh, get a little stronger. So, it's good to have him in the house. It's good to have our ministers with us. Thank you, Minister Thompson. Thank you, Minister Packer, for singing in the background and working with the AD, making sure everything's in place. We're having some technical difficulties for those that are watching online. We were unable to connect our cameras uh, this morning to our actual sound. Uh, so, and our board, so you are listening directly uh, from the actual phone as we uh, record for this morning. And so if the sound is off or something is not working, we pray that you can still hear us uh, so that you can be blessed in the word of God on today. Amen. Thank God for Brother Corey Walker. 
the Court of Law, the Court of Law, the Court of Law. I'm glad that you came to join us out of all the other places you could have been. You chose to be here. So may God bless you today. My brother Walker may keep you. May this not be your last time coming. Amen. Bless the Lord. May you come again and fellowship with us. My brother Elliot, I'm looking for you to come again, so I can throw that in. Uh, brother Walker, you're part of the family now. Uh, you might as well come on and, and feel free to just join in and be a part of what is going on as well. Amen. I don't want it to take you long today, but I do want to leave a thought. I want to leave a word that's going to touch your lives by the help of the Lord because it's not what I say, but it's actually what thus says the Lord. And the only way to get to that word is by us surrendering our hearts and our minds and our souls to God. Many of us may rely on our strength. We may rely on our wisdom. We may rely on what we know. May even go back to things that are very familiar to us. But it doesn't mean this is what God has for our lives. There's something much greater. Yeah. Something much deeper. There's a purpose that God has just for you. And that's why you are so unique. That's why you are so different. Because God planned it that way. God doesn't need a church full of people that are the same. Because when we are exactly the same, we're unable to reach such a broad, diverse group of individuals. So you can celebrate your differences. And you can still be grateful because we have oneness in Christ. And y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said you can celebrate your unique differences. But understand that we still have a oneness in the body of Christ. We're yes. unified through Christ. But God has designed you to be unique, even down to your thumbprint, the pattern of your eyes. Everything about you is designed for His glory. So if you wonder, you've been looking around saying, why? that I have to be like this because there's something in you that's unique yeah. that glorifies God. Oh, <laughs> so other people are trying to put you down or say things about you. Most of the time it's because of things in them that make them feel inadequate. That make them feel like they're lacking. Or that makes them feel like they have to do that to you so that they can feel better about themselves. Yeah. So we pray for them because we know that even with our flaws and our frailties, yeah. God has made us for his glory. Amen. You are unique. You should celebrate that. Come on, clap your hands. I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew. In the 19th chapter, Matthew, the New Testament, first gospel, which is Jesus sharing that good news that the Messiah has come. As we turn to that chapter, we go down to the 16th verse, stand to our feet in reverence to God's word. It's just our way to honor him because he is our Lord and our King. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? He said unto him, Why call it thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy mother, thy father, and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. 
What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sow that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciple, Verily, I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then said Peter, said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all, and follow thee, what shall we have there, or therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And by his Lord God, we thank you. We thank you today for this word that has been read into our hearing. We understand that your word is life. We understand that your word gives power to the weak. Lord God, it strengthens those that, Lord God, have fallen by the wayside and need help. Your word, Lord God, gives us knowledge and understanding on how we can live our lives to please you. And how we can overcome the warfare of the enemy, which is Satan the devil, who operates in darkness. Help us now, Lord God, to walk in the light of your word. Help us that we will learn how to love, how to forgive. And we will learn how to be that example, that city, that light that is set on a hill. That cannot be hidden so that we can understand that you came, that you died, that you rose. That we may have a relationship with you. So now, Lord God, bless this house as we surrender our all unto thee. Speak a word of life in our midst, and we'll never give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated at this time. I like the way this chapter, this particular uh, illustration of the Bible begins because it talks about one coming. God has a way of singling us out or separating us when it becomes a time for our situation to be dealt with. God looks at us as a unique individual and being. Notice God is dealing with one individual. For some reason, this individual decided that he wanted to ask God about gaining eternal life. One thing we have to understand, eternal life is not something that we can marry or earn. It's not something that we do some great act or something that we do in our lives that will actually cause us to find favor with God because of our goodness. Many times we like to say that someone is a good man or that is a good woman. But notice here that the very Savior of the world, when this young man comes to him, looks at Christ and says, good master. Jesus looks at him and says, first of all, why are you calling me good? I want you to understand there is none good but one. So you're coming to me and I'm dealing with you as an individual, but I'm not going to talk about myself in this flesh. 
I'm going to turn you to the God that made heaven and earth. Because you need a better view and focus on who God really is. Because when you see God for who he really is, then you understand your frailty, your flaws, your weaknesses, and why you really need him in your life. So there's none good, don't call me good, when you're looking at this flesh. But I want you to understand that God is the only one that's true. I want you to understand that God is the only place that you can stand where there's fertile ground and soil. If you want to live a bountiful and productive life, then you need to be wrapped up and tied up and anchored in Him. If you want an environment that is conducive to being suitable, you need to reside in Him. If you want to make sure that you grab hold of truth and soundness, then you need to reside in Him. Because when you look at society today, you understand that society operates within its own emotional structure. And when you see what that does for our country, it brings us into chaos. When men operate after the things that they feel are right in their own hearts, we have a bad situation. And so here God is trying to get us to understand that if you want to get in a place where there's respect, where there's a place of honor, where there's a place where you can be satisfied, that you can find joy, peace, stability, soberness, you're going to have to find it in Him. Yes, God is our good master or teacher. But God is trying to get us to understand don't focus on the flesh. So when this young man called him good master, he was saying, I recognize that you are actually a teacher. I recognize that you're actually a person that holds authority and someone that has the ability to train others in your philosophy or teaching. I understand that you are a ruler or even in a position to govern. And so I'm calling you master because of your superiority, your ability to be sovereign as Lord and King. Many of us don't understand the importance of understanding where our heart is. But in this message today, I want you to understand that God actually knows your heart. Why don't you just think about that for a minute? God knows our hearts. That means that no matter what people think about us, no matter, no matter what their perception is of us, it really doesn't matter. Because when it comes down to the truth, God is looking at us as an individual. Amen. And when God is looking at this young man as an individual, he looks at him and says, you need to keep the commandments. Yeah. And so he says, well, Lord, what commandments should I keep? What is in your word that I should honor? But in the word of God that I should honor. And the Lord began to run down. First of all, you shouldn't commit murder. Amen. Shouldn't be going around killing folks in the natural or with your mouth and your tongue. Amen. You shouldn't be trying to destroy people based upon your perception because what you see may be a skewed perception. Amen. Because you don't understand somebody's story, don't make up your own. Well, somebody needs to tell them thank you. 
Another thing he said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah. Somebody said, well, I haven't been running around sleeping with other men's wives and I'm married. But the Lord said to you, if you look on them, yeah. I'll go back to that scripture another day. <laughs> if you look on her and you desire her, yeah. and you want her for yourself, if you go back to the story of David, you find that to be true. He looked at Bathsheba yeah. until looking at her drew him and drove him to kill a man and take another man's wife. Yeah. So it starts on the inside in your thoughts yeah. and in your heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is saying. And then he says, not only that, thou shalt not steal. Yeah. Amen. Somebody says, but I didn't steal anything from anybody. Uh -huh. Sometimes you steal people's credit. Uh -huh. Sometimes you rob God because you won't bless his church. Yeah. Amen. I'm not talking about offering, because I know that's the first thing people are saying. Pastor wants us to give. No, I'm saying, the Lord said, give unto God what is God's. And unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So God didn't say give all to me. He said give what is mine to me. Yeah. I'm not asking you for anything. I work for them. <laughs> but I'm telling you that God can bless whatever little you give him out of your heart. Yes, yes. He can bless and multiply that. Then he said, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Jesus. Stop lying to folk. Amen. Amen. Stop saying stuff about people that you know are not true. Amen. Stop trying to hurt your brother and sister's credibility because that's not of God. Amen. We are not here to devour one another but to build one another up in yes. Christ Jesus yes. our Lord. So if I can do anything, let me strengthen you in Christ. Amen. Instead of trying to destroy you. Amen. Now the young man hears this and he feels within himself, I'm doing pretty good. Because I have done all of this stuff since I was a child. Yeah. I was being taught the commandments and I got them written down on my neck. I got them written down on my walls. I got them written down on a stone. I got I carried around with me uh, in my cloth, my garment, so I could look at it every now and again just in case I get a pop quiz. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. But I want you to understand something. He only figured that God could see what was on the outside. But there was a lesson to learn that day. Yeah. Because Jesus looked at him and squaring up, looking him eye to eye, no doubt, he said, but there's something that's still there. Something I see that you have fallen in love with. Why don't you take all your goods, give them to the poor, distribute them to the poor, and then come and follow me. And you'll have treasure that is in the heaven. Now, it wasn't because he had riches that Jesus said this. Because if you look down in history or in the past, you will notice that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yep. acquired much wealth. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. You will understand that Solomon, one of the richest men, David, yep. they had much wealth and commodities that God had given unto them. Matter of fact, when the children of Israel left out of bondage from the land of Egypt, God made sure that the Egyptians gave them out of their riches. So it wasn't the riches 
that God was pointing at as much as what was actually in the heart of the young man. In other words, your love is not for God. You are under the cloud and the title of godliness. You say you love Jehovah with your mouth. But your heart is far away from you. In other words, you speak about what you have done through your lifetime as though you are proud of what you have accomplished. But in reality, your heart has never been in love with me. You've never really followed me. You never really understood me. You never really reached out to search for me. Yeah. You might have enjoyed the blessings that I could give. Yeah. You enjoyed good health. You enjoyed all of the knowledge and the wisdom and the power. You have enjoyed the riches that I allowed you to acquire. Uh -huh. Oh yes, you may have many camels. You may have a couple of chariots. You may have a big mansion. You may have all of the friends that exist in the higher echelon in group of society, but you have not a relationship with the creator of this world. You don't understand who the giver of life really is. You don't know the savior of your soul. And because of this, you have not come into a place when you can know me as God, a God that can move mountains of God, and then that can bind the enemy, a God that can set free those that have been held captive all of their lives. Matter of fact, you've been praying, but you don't even know who you're praying to. You've been talking about me, but in reality, you don't really know me. You've been reading the Bible, but the Bible has not become an active part of your daily operations and lifestyle. So you have a form of godliness, but you have no power. In other words, when your flesh dictates to you to curse and lie and swear and mistreat others, you follow. Because there is no power. When your flesh tells you to follow after strange things, you do it because you have no power to stand against it. Many of us understand what I'm talking about. Because many of us were bound and held captive by things like pornography. Many of us was caught up in line and cheating. Somebody said, why are you go straight to pornography? Because many of you on that computer, you think you're all by yourself. But you're not by yourself. You're not alone. Amen. You stay up late at night so you can watch the late night HBO and all of the other Cinemax and well, you don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. Oh, I, I've been on TV. I see where some things can come up. And some of us are bound by all sorts of mischievous and perverse things that we do in secret. But God says, I'm singling you out because I really know what is in your heart. Because where your heart is, that is where your treasures are also. Where your heart lies, that's where you really reside in your relationship between God or your relationship between the world. Yes. So here this young man is excited about being in this place where he can say, I am living a godly life, when in reality, he did not really love God Amen. the way that he should. And so Solomon picks it up in Proverbs in the third chapter and he says this to us. He says, my son, forget not my law, but let thy heart 
keep my commandments. Yeah. Why? For length of days. Why? Praise the Lord. Because you need peace. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And because these things will be added unto you. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the tables of thy heart. So shalt thy Thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and in the sight of man. And he said this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways. You need to acknowledge him. Why? Because he will direct your path. So in other words, if you want God to lead you, if you want God to direct you, if you want God to instruct you in righteousness, then you need to learn how to trust God. Because the more you trust Him, the more you rely on Him, the more you study in His Word to show yourself a proof of workmen that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth. You are going to be anchored in the Lord. You are going to have a better understanding of what God has designed for the believer and those that will reign with him throughout eternity. And not only this, but you will learn that God has a special purpose and for your life. That's why he has made you as a unique individual in him. And the more you never God, God says, I'm going to bless you, and when I exalt you, no man is going to be able to bring you down. I'm going to give you good understanding. I'm going to help you to have favor, not only with God, but I'm going to give you favor amen, with man. If you want to know how you can uh, be elevated in God, it is to humble yourself at the feet of the cross of Jesus. If you want to learn how uh, to gain knowledge in God, it is to submit yourself under the rule and the, the leadership and the tutelage of Jesus Christ. If you want to learn how uh, to gain more power to overcome the, the warfare of darkness and of the enemy, it is to seek him out uh, in the word that he has left unto us. Us, which is scripture, uh, the name of our God will be praised and exalted as you take him in through his word. Somebody tell him hallelujah. Oh yes, this is why we let mercy and truth uh, lead us and be bound in our hearts and in our mind because truth never fails. Anything that is not truth will eventually fail. Yes, it will. But if I speak truth, I can always come back to it, and it's always the same. You remember when you were younger, and you told a lie? When they came back to you, you always had to modify the lie because you couldn't remember the last one. But when you told the truth, you didn't have to worry because when you came back to the truth, it was always the same. Yeah. Yes. You didn't have to keep modifying it and working on it and, and trying to remember and writing down notes so that you wouldn't fail the next time you told the story. I'm about to let it go. But he says this, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And if he will direct your path because what is in your heart will deceive you. Your heart can be very deceptive when God is not in control. Amen. Matter of fact, when your heart is leading and you get caught up in your emotions, you make some bad choices, won't you? Amen. I made some bad decisions in my life based upon how I felt at the time. When I was younger, I did things like that. I was more impulsive. Yeah. Anybody in here can say that you were impulsive at one time in your life? Yeah. Some of y'all still watching that channel at night that sells you stuff, and y'all are just buying and buying. <laughs> on job level. 
But what God is saying to you is when you are anchored in me, I will direct your path. Matter of fact, the Spirit of the Lord will come in and speak to your heart and say, you know you shouldn't say that. Amen. You know you shouldn't treat it like that. Amen. Oh yes, there's times I wanted to say something to the first lady and then the Lord said, oh no, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> you know the Lord is nice and said, I want it well for you. So he taught me before I stepped into a mess. And that's what God is saying. I know it's in your heart. And if you listen, I will help you so that you don't step right into the middle of a mess. In a snare, and a trap that you can't get out of. And then I'll bless you and I'll give you riches in heaven. How many of y'all would rather have riches in heaven? Matter of fact, the Bible says it's better for you to make sure that you plant your feet in a sound place and that you build up your treasures in heaven where walls don't break through. Rust doesn't even corrupt. Any of you ever went in your clothes after the winter and you had some little holes in them? Yep. <laughs> Yes. It doesn't look the same as it used to because some little critters got in there. You ever go back to something that was nice and shiny and silver, but you let it sit in the corner and, and you go back to it and it's all rusty? I'm not talking about because of age and getting older and a little dusty. And that's another story. But God is saying, if you learn how to let me work in your life, I'm going to lead you into truth. And you don't have to worry about becoming archaic. And you're no longer relevant. Because my word is always relevant in the time that it is spoken. My word will always bring light, no matter where you find yourself. So the Lord is telling us this, I know your heart. I know who you are. You don't have to change your demeanor to try to deceive me because I'm looking past your physical structure. I'm looking past your body language. I'm looking past uh, your facial expression. I'm looking past uh, what is going on on the exterior. I'm looking past how wealthy and how well you look. And I'm looking on the internal portion of who you are. And God says, I want to make you healthy and well on the inside. So it's vitally important to understand that not only God knows where your heart is, but you need to ask God to let your heart be in the right place. Amen. Because if your heart is in the right place, your treasures will be in the right place. Amen. And then you won't be focused on the things that will pass away. Amen. Because the things of this world, they are only temporal. How many of y'all love your car that you drive? You love the car you drive? Amen. It's only temporal. Mm -hmm. Give it a couple years and the newness wears off. Amen. How about your houses? When you bought them, did you love the houses that you lived in? Yes, yes but you lived in them for a while and what did you find out? You had to spend more money out of your pocket to fix it back up. Yeah. So, anything in this world is temporal. Yeah. But everything is in God. Everything that God offers. Everything that God has for you. That's eternal. So I encourage you today. To know this. When you come to God. When you are seeking God's plan and God's will. 
Don't come to him prideful. Thinking about all that you have done well. Because we all can feel like we've done well. The Bible said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof leads to destruction. So yes, I was doing a lot of things that I thought I was doing well. But the more I studied the word of God, the more I humbled myself before the Lord, the more I studied, then I realized, Lord have mercy, I need some help. Anybody in here ever came to a place where you needed help? Hey, God. You needed help. It's not weakness to say that you need help from God. I know the world teaches us that. You can do it by yourself. No. I need God to help me. Because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, but if Christ doesn't strengthen me, then I can't do it. Amen. I won't be able to make it right. or survive. So today, I thank God for you being here with me. Amen. I thank God for you being willing to hear what best is the Lord. But before you leave here today, as we bring it to a close, and we go into a time to minister to you, in prayer. I want you to remember this. That God knows what is in your heart. And He wants you to surrender your life fully to Him. And the only way to fully surrender your life to God is to follow what His Word says. We find it in the book of Acts and they came to the Lord and they were trying to figure out when is your kingdom coming. The Lord says, first of all, it's not for you to even know when the kingdom is coming. That is not the priority right now for you. You need to understand that if you go and wait for the comforter to come, He's going to give you power so when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall have power to be a witness. Amen. See, God is not asking you to save lives and save souls. He saves lives and He saves souls. What He's asking you to do is be a witness for Him. He wants you to tell the world that He is a God that loved us so much that while we were yet in our sins, He gave us the very best heaven had to give. Jesus came, God incarnated in flesh, suffered, bled, died. The only one that was without sin. The only one that did not commit treason and trespasses against heaven. And he took on our sins. Now I don't know about you, but I'm glad he took on my sins because my sins were great. But he took my sins on. And then he made a way for me, someone who was dead in sin, to take him on and his righteousness on and then he quickened me and made me alive by his spirit and by his power divine. But then I followed his leading because Jesus himself allowed John the Baptist to baptize him. John said, Lord, don't let this, don't let this occur. You're, you're the Messiah. How in the world am I going to baptize the Messiah? The king of glory, how am I going to baptize you? Jesus said, hold up. This is necessary. Because I have to be the example to everyone that is coming behind me. 
to know how to gain this great salvation. So I need you to baptize me, John, so that everyone that comes behind me will be baptized by the water baptism. Yes. John didn't sprinkle him. John didn't throw water on him. John took him and submerged him in water. And then when Jesus got up out of the water, the Bible said the Spirit of God descended upon him as a dove. So in other words, not only does God want you to go down in him, but he wants you to rise up in him and then allow the Spirit of the Lord yeah. yes. to come upon you. Yeah. Because when the Spirit of the Lord comes on you, yeah. You will never be the same again. He'll give you clarity of thought. He'll give you a different heart. Matter of fact, God said what happens is your heart is a heart of stone. He says, but I take that heart of stone away from you and I give you a heart of flesh. In other words, I give you a heart that is receptive to my word. And then you can really get to know me for who I am. Then you won't be mad at me anymore because stuff happens because you're going to understand through your studies that sin is why stuff happens and sin entered into the world by the disobedience of man. God said if I loved you I'd give you the ability to make some choices. That's the greatest gift God has given us. So man chose to make wrong choices. And we can blame Adam, we can blame Eve, but let me ask you a question. Have you made any wrong choices? Yes. And those wrong choices didn't always work out in your interest, best interest. So what Jesus is saying, if you come and take me on by water baptism, if you take me on and allow my spirit to engulf your life, I'm going to bless you beyond your imagination. Because when you do this, you will never have to worry about what is to come. Because what is to come is only coming from glory, which is eternal. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be there also. And the way, you're going to know it because I am the way. So today, I just want to invite you to come to Jesus. To be baptized by water baptism. To be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Not just to be emotional, but so you can learn how to live a holy life daily that is pleasing in the sight of God. Yes. And out of that, you will become a jubilant and excited individual because you will understand the urgency of being with Christ. Why don't you stand to your feet today as we go into worship. God knows your heart. May God bless you. I am so glad